Well, welcome back. And it seems the lions that were making all the noise this morning are the Angama Pride. So here they are, uh, quite spread out, directly below Angama and final control. And uh, they seem to be listening to some zebras making some noise. So who knows? I'm trying to see how hungry they are. Not too hungry. Well, the cubs look relatively well fed. And uh, the ladies are mostly flat on termite mounds. Although one lady has decided to sit up and have a look. And she's looking back behind us. There was a giraffe around, but it, it seems to have vacated the area quite wisely so. There we go, some more lions having a snooze. So the migration has its benefits as well as its drawbacks for the lions. So when the migration is here, the, it's easy pickings. It's a time of plenty. But when they leave, they leave lots of short grass, which makes hunting a little bit more difficult. And uh, I'm pretty sure that these lions have been using the forested areas uh, or on the peripheries of them waiting for zebra, because there's still quite a lot of zebra around. Um, to meander a little bit too close to the thickets and then make their move from there. Uh, the sun is about to break through the clouds and give us some absolutely gorgeous light on these big cats. I think I'm going to spend a little bit more time here and see if they get moving. I want lioness who's in front of us is a oh there's a little cubby are you going to go stalk the zebra mister looks like a young male starting to get a bit of fluff around his neck i don't know if you guys can hear you can hear the zebra in the distance How much has climate change affected the <laughs> um, Lisa is wondering how much has climate change affected the migration. I would say it, it hasn't really yet. The one thing you must remember with climate change, and, and, and a lot of people don't really get this, that it, it is a, it's a very gradual thing and it takes a long time to see noticeable differences. Now, obviously in places like the polar ice caps, it's much easier to see those differences over a shorter period. But in an area like the Mara, I'd say the local climate has not changed too much. Um, there was a drought this year, but must remember droughts are normal in Africa. Um, most parts of Africa work on about a seven, seven year cycle, seven wet years, seven dry, drier years, um, with troughs and, and, and peaks between those. So I'd say currently there hasn't been much of an effect, uh, on the Mara itself. So there we go. There's that light bursting through the clouds. So in a lot of places, the effects of climate change are only going to be, be seen in 20 to 30 years. Um, it's, a lot of it's very, very small, very, very gradual changes and, and, and over seasonally. And so it's, it's very difficult to pinpoint something without the correct data. And that data needs to be collected over an extended period. And uh, quite a lot of people jump to conclusions quite quickly. And uh, I prefer to do my research before I start making any bold statements. Diana in New York. How many cubs does the Angama Pride have? Diana in New York. Hi, Diana in New York. Diana's wondering how many cubs uh, does the Angama Pride have? Now, if I remember correctly, there should be 12 in total. Some of them are quite small that have probably been left in a thicket. Um, these are the bigger ones that are moving a little bit more with the pride. Um, but if I remember correctly, there should be 12 cubs in total. Four lionesses and 12 cubs. Okay. 